breakthroughs in the new areas. Uh, two short historical examples why it should uh, it can, can work, actually. The first one is related somehow even to Hawaii. Uh, you will know uh, how does it work. So in the 18th century, 1714, the British uh, government, uh, the royal government, uh, just said, OK, we should be better to know where we are on sea. And uh, the problem was at that time that you can just uh, look at the sky and you can get your latitude, but not your longitude. To get your position, you need to know precisely the time. And at that time, there was no good chronometer which could work on sea. So they said, uh, in order to get much better results, we give 25,000 pounds, which was a huge money those time, to whom to can create a chronometer which helps to tell us where we are on sea uh, with some precise uh, measurement. Uh, nobody won uh, this prize formally, but uh, a man called um, Harrison, Harrison? Mm -hmm. what is that? Something with H, I don't know the name. Somebody. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, it was actually, uh, I believe, uh, uh, later went into the watchmaking and then the things like this. And he invented the chronometer called H4 and K4. And it was used also by Captain Cook on his journeys. And it was just uh, later on 150 years the standard chronometer on sea. So that was just the first uh, one example. How can you push something with uh, some incentive money? The second uh, uh, short example on this is uh, the flight of Charles Lindbergh, 1927. He was the first who flew over the Atlantic uh, without landing uh, in the meantime. And uh, this was just the uh, start of the modern aviation industry, actually. So it just generated interest and uh, pushed uh, the people, OK, we can fly over the Atlantic. So it, uh, it makes sense uh, to think about uh, in business models as well. And did he win an X Prize? No, he won an Ortec Prize because it was uh, uh, offered by a New York hotelier of Ortega, and it was a $25,000 prize. That time, again, quite a good money. And these uh, examples uh, inspired Peter Diamandis, who then founded the X-Prize Foundation in 1996, uh, just with the goal to create prizes, incentive prizes, which can revolutionize uh, some new areas. The first X-Prize was the Ansari X-Prize, won 2004, October 4th, by Scaled Composites, and probably everybody knows Virgin Galactic. Virgin Galactic is the successor of this uh, uh, scaled composites. They just bought uh, the knowledge uh, of, of that one, and they are building up the space tourism industry, if you like. And this was the goal of the first X Prize, the answer X Prize, just to create a cheaper and reliable human access into space. The goal was that time just build a vehicle which is capable of getting a man or a people within two weeks the same machine into space. Space uh, is just starts at 100 kilometers. This is called the Karman line. By the way, Karman was a Hungarian engineer uh, from the <laughs> GPL and uh, several other things. And the 100 kilometers came uh, from his calculations that uh, this is not, not exactly 100, but in the range when you can use aerodynamic force uh, to fly. Uh, the atmosphere is getting uh, too thin above this line. And that's the reason they call the Karman line. This is the edge of the space, if you like. This was just a... a Definition of the answer X prize get above 100 kilometers uh, two times within two weeks with the same machine uh, with people on that. And it worked. So 2004 uh, scale composites won. There were other teams also, and they are working further. And it seems that next year the first commercial lines will be flying. The Virgin Galactic, X Core, and two other, uh, one or two other companies as well. So this is the X-Prize Foundation, and uh, they created a couple of other prizes. And in the exploration category, the space category, the next one was just the Google Lunar X-Prize, which is shortly described here. It's a very easy uh, competition, if you like. Build a robot, bring it to the moon, let that robot uh, move at least 500 meters there, send back images and videos, and do this with 90% private financing. That's it. It's doable <laughs> because we know there were robots on the moon 40 years ago, the Lunarhots, uh, they were there, the Russians. Since Saturday, the Chinese are there uh, with Jade Rabbit. In those times that it was invented in 2007, 
uh, that was just an uh, incentive just to create it, uh, uh, private teams who can just uh, do this really. The idea behind it uh, just to exp ex expand or if you like economy into space, not only into the orbital space economy we have since the 60s, telecommunication satellites, uh, earth monitoring satellites, spy satellites, whatever you have. So there is a huge industry. Actually, the space industry, it's a 300 billion dollar industry here. And, and this is mostly private. Uh, NASA and ESA and the Russians and the Japanese come up, up to 40 billion dollars or something like that. So it's less, uh, it's slightly more than 10 percent. The rest is just private. So the idea behind this is just if you want to go a little bit higher and far away, the next natural step is going back to the moon. And just to make reconnaissance there, what can we do there? What are the resources there? Can we use them? Can we use them on Earth or can we use them in situ just to build something which can go further into space? You know that uh, one of the major blocks to leave the Earth is just the gravity well, we have here. The moon has a gravity which is one-sixth of that of Earth. That means it's much easier to get out from the moon. We don't have even an atmosphere which is, uh, in that case, good. In some other cases, not so good. And the geological and the mineral composition of the moon is very, very similar to that of Earth. Uh, so that means that we can find material there that we can use to build bases or even more, or even something can be back, can be brought back to Earth if just the transportation costs, costs uh, <laughs> go down. So that's the idea behind the Google Lunar X Prize. Try to get out, try to make private investment, financial and uh, intellectual, into this business uh, and check if this can work. The prize was announced in uh, 2007, uh, then came 2008, Lehman Brothers and uh, things like that. So that was uh, the reason that they just uh, postponed a little bit the deadline. The deadline is now 2015, December 31st. So that's uh, two years from now, actually. And I just described what the task is. It's easy. It can be done. It has been shown that it can be done. Uh, the question is here if it can be done with much less money and uh, small things, because uh, the major price uh, driver is actually cost driver is mass, steel mass to get everything to the moon. So that means that uh, the goal is just uh, to set up private organizations uh, who are interested in doing such things and setting up some new business models and to check what happened in the last 40 years. What can we use from electronics and uh, small things, whatever. So that's the, that's the challenge. Yes. <laughs> Need to give it the focus. Uh, yes. <laughs> so uh, they expect at that time, as they created the prize, that uh, 10, 12 teams will register. Altogether, 33 teams uh, registered. Four of them uh, resigned before the official end of registration. It was end of 2010. So there were 29 teams uh, from 17 countries just uh, who think they can make this feat. Right now we are 22. So the number is shrinking, but still a very vivid competition. It's, uh, there are a lot of US teams. There are teams uh, from uh, Brazil, Canada, Chile, uh, Germany, Spain, Romania, Denmark, Russia, India, even Indonesia. Hey, Malaysia, I believe, Malaysia, I believe so. Israel, and we are from Hungary. So that's actually the competition we are in. And uh, I will come also to the fact why we are right now here in Hawaii, in a big island as well. Okay, we started three and a half years ago, and you might be, you might think that Hungary is not a space power, and you are right, Hungary is not a space <laughs> power. Okay, so, but there are some uh, very good. Uh, developments uh, were done in Hungary or by Hungarian. Maybe not everybody knows that the Apollo 
uh, moon cars, the lunar roving vehicles. The chief designer is uh, Ferenc Pavlic, is a Hungarian. He lives uh, in good health in Santa Barbara still. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we are proud of this, of course, and we would like to do something. Uh, but uh, again, Hungary is a small country with a uh, small space, not e maybe not even called industry, just some space activities, uh, maybe mostly from academics and uh, university works. I was thinking one year uh, before I decided just to start with this experiment and endeavor. Uh, can I do this in Hungary? Is there any resources? There is there any interest there? And we are thriving still, survived and got some results as well. So I believe it was worth of, of starting. And we started with a very unconventional way. I talked to several people in Hungary. They said, yes, it can be done, uh, but it's, it's complicated. We don't have the resources, we don't have the money. Who can we get that over to the moon? Uh, and so on and so on. And they say, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> they say, we, if we don't start, that we definitely don't get to the moon. So I just started and uh, uh, with some colleagues. Uh, and we started in a very unconventional way. We did some guerrilla marketing and uh, we posted uh, in some engineering blogs and science blogs that say, we are putting together a team. Are you interested? And young people came and uh, a very different uh, walk of life and we're still working with uh, most of, uh, many of them we have also changes we are uh, up to two of us uh, an all volunteer team so that uh, is a big management question how to manage uh, 30 we have uh, on the average 30 volunteers it's not easy to manage them but we did get good results and we are just getting a hardcore i believe so this is what we started from, and then a little bit more about the work, what we did. I'll just check what is there. So some of the team members, some of them are already not really working. One of the guys, uh, John C. It's a Marty. It's a Martin, yeah. yeah. So that's uh, it's a connection, actually, is uh, why we are here. Let me tell you why we are here, okay? so. Within the Google Lunar X Prize, uh, there is a very important task, which is education and uh, public outreach. So it's uh, the teams must do uh, public outreach as well. And one of the goals of the competition, just to, to show the uh, young people and the general public that space is fun, space is good, we would like to generate something like the Apollo Air Awards, just uh, that, that uh, kind of enthusiasm, mm -hmm. what a little bit done in, in the last 20, 30 years. So education and public outreach is important, and XPRIZE uh, uh, cooperated with uh, the corporates with LEGO, and they have a robotics competition actually using LEGO's uh, uh, Mindstorms uh, set, uh, and they call it Moonbots. Moonbots is just, uh, if you like, the little GLS3 little Google Lunar XPRIZE. The task in 2012 uh, was just to build a LEGO robot, which is doing the same as uh, required by the Google Lunar X Prize. Make a small uh, layout, two times two uh, meters layout, uh, build a rover, uh, let's move, uh, and so on. And this competition was won by a Hungarian team led by Or Martin. So he was just a captain. He's a very talented young guy from Chopron. And the grand prize they won uh, was just to visit Pisces, uh, <laughs> to go to Hawaii. And that was just uh, the starting point that we just discussed, okay, uh, John thought, why the big guys are not coming here to test it? And we think, yeah, why not? So, okay, that's a good thing. Because uh, Pisces has a very unique testing site, actually. In the Mauna Kea, the High Vahini Valley, uh, uh, is the composition of the soil. And the rocks is very similar to the lunar uh, regolith. So the dust is uh, not uh, such what you uh, expect and in, in, uh, desserts or whatever, it's not so rounded up, it's just really sharp uh, and uh, uh, even the distribution is similar. So that was a good thing. So this is actually an ideal site to, to test uh, uh, everything here and the uh, field test is, uh, is always the best thing to do this. So that's the reason we are here. Not so little, but something maybe about this. Uh, what are actually the challenges here? So, of course, there is an engineering challenge to build first just a, a, a vehicle, a craft, it is called in the rules, uh, which is capable of uh, moving 500 meters on the surface on the moon and sending back uh, HD images and videos. This is 
one technical challenge. It's not so easy, uh, even if you know that it uh, can be done. We have some very, very strange environmental conditions. So it's a bit different like here. So we have 120 to minus uh, 150, the same time, left side, right side, here's sun, here's shadow, here's vacuum, here's, there is radiation, um, which we don't experience here. So there are some other things uh, uh, what we have to take into account. There's lunar dust and there is a one-sixth gravitation. So let's just go a little bit uh, on the challenges. So this, this is a challenge to build a rover uh, which can survive and can move and can go. Uh, the other challenge is to get to the moon. Uh, there is no bus ticket you can buy <laughs> at the moment. So you can buy a ticket to a lower orbit. You can go to several companies say, I, I have a nice satellite, uh, what does it cost to get it there? And they say, okay, it's $10,000 per kilogram, whatever, do this, do that, and they fly it. But there is no way further. So there is no regular transport services to the moon. So the challenge is uh, to get to the moon, and there are actually two possibilities. You build your own taxi and lander, or you fly with somebody. Uh, at the beginning, we thought we uh, might be able to do some simple uh, lander. And it has some consequences for the rover design. Uh, the idea was just uh, to think of an airbag assisted landing, like the first Mars rover was landed. That means that uh, you don't need to be very precise. You can use just a solid uh, fuel, for instance. You don't have to be uh, on the precise side. In the end, uh, you just set up an airbag, but you don't know where you actually land. So uh, land, because just one by time. If you don't know where you land on the moon, then there is a good chance that you end up in, in a crater somehow. So that means that you have to climb out of this crater. Mm -hmm. That means that you have to think of your uh, ability to move, so your mobility system. And that was just the idea that uh, led us uh, to think of um, a combination of wheel and leg, which is called VEG. It's not from us, it's just uh, in Wikipedia, as so somebody does uh, coin. So this is a, a, a quest uh, to combine the positive uh, attitude of a uh, wheel and the leg. The wheel is very good in smooth terrain. The leg is very good uh, on slopes and on climbing stairs or rocks. And there are some uh, models uh, which try to do this and uh, we came up with this idea that's okay, if we don't know where we land, we will uh, go up to probably higher slopes and uh, there could be uh, rocky uh, things. We don't expect stairs there but <laughs> rocks uh, in any way. So it just came up this one and we uh, have been thinking almost two years on various uh, combinations of this. How it should look like, uh, what is the best combination. It must be lightweight, it must be strong enough, uh, uh, and, and so on. And it must, must be simple because we have only a few resources. So from money and from everything else. So this, is came, this came up. I will tell a little bit more about this one. This was the, the challenge. Go back to the challenges, what you have. So. Uh, Okay, then we abandoned uh, the, the whole task uh, to create an own lander because we didn't have the time and the finances. So we will be with a VR negotiation right now with two other teams to go with a ride sharing option. They have lander, or that they will have lander. They started the OVR and they have more resources, so and we trust them that their lander will go and will work. So this is uh, the option we do, and then. Uh, Actually, only one more task remains, how to get financing. This is by uh, this way the most uh, challenging. challenging task, yeah. That's it's really, and uh, okay, that's the uh, environment is not uh, in favor of this thing. So since 2008, 2009, this, uh, this uh, was getting everything uh, much harder. Hungary is not an exception, so. Uh, it's not easy, but we survived right now, and I believe we are in a good position to go further. So this, these are the challenges. And again, the biggest is not the technical one. It's big enough. The biggest is to get the money and to get organized. So how, can, how do we 
try just to face uh, and uh, solve these uh, problems. So we are building communities. We are using uh, uh, the web, uh, Facebook, whatever we have. More than 8,000 fans in the meantime on our Facebook site, which is quite good for a tech project uh, like this in Hungary. Uh, we have a couple of sponsors, uh, smaller, bigger, so about around 20, 25. It depends on how we define the sponsorship. Uh, this is not interesting. Uh, finance part and this is uh, actually our vision how to get to the moon in five steps the first step we did uh, we became an official team we just put uh, down laid down a concept uh, how do we think it can be done we just uh, paid the reserva uh, registration fee which was fifty thousand dollars so it's just uh, also money what we have to push really on the table uh, and this we uh, achieved uh, 2011, and uh, we are right now in between this thing, actually. Uh, two is finished. This is the result of uh, phase two. We call it iteration two. It's just a prototype which is uh, doing uh, the same what we would expect uh, uh, from the real one. So this designed for earthly conditions. It's not, not for space. Uh, but the functionality and everything is, uh, is the same, actually. And we learn a lot of, and we are working right now on the space scale version, just learning from all the stuff we do with this. And we use uh, uh, this design for testing somewhere. We should be ready in half a year or something like that with the design of the space scale version. And then uh, latest uh, mid of 2015, the flight version must be ready, unless you don't want to win the prize, because the time is not enough for that. So we have a very tight schedule behind before us, but we are. We hope that we can manage this still. This one. Uh, you see that twin of this. Uh, you can take a look in John's truck. It's there. Uh, it's a little difference. Uh, it has.